and the convening and, and some other things. If you have any questions, please tweet in. Make sure to uh, uh, hashtag new play. As, uh, that way we can read the question. So, Karen. Sir, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> so, your playwright, what are you working on right now? What's going on in your world? Well, um, it's interesting. I, I'm a playwright that has not wanted to be defined by any one form of play. So, mm -hmm. I just wrote a children's musical that's going to be at La Jolla Playhouse that we open on Tuesday. And it's going to go around touring to 16,000 different um, public school children um, about oh, wow. Frida Kahlo as a child. So. That's the one project I'm working on there. Um, and then I am starting a new play, hopefully in the next two or three weeks. I'm also, Legacy of Light is mm -hmm. having a life, which is very exciting. And I've just finished a big rewrite on the book club play. I've, I've gone back to revisit some of the plays I've written mm -hmm. and taken what I've learned from those productions and kind of internalized that and written a new version of a lot of these plays. So I'm working yeah. on the book club play and how the Garcia girls lost their accents. I'm doing a rewrite of that play. And some people think it's odd to do such a, such a big reworking after they've been produced or had several productions. But I think productions are essential in learning what the strength of the play is and what I need to learn more. So I've been working a lot on making what I have better. Mm -hmm. And then I hope to come up with something new. To, you know, to wow, that's a lot that you're working on right now. I'm also adapting uh, Just Like Us, which is a book written, written by Helen Thorpe about immigration uh -huh. um, for theater. That's amazing. Karen is one of the resident playwrights uh, here at Arena. And like you said, you're, you're going through a lot of your um, plays and reworking them. What, why did you decide to do that? Well, to spend some of her time in her residency and some of her resources as resident to do that. Well, um, I was really fortunate um, to be picked for the residency. I live here in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to live at home and suddenly be given the time to really go back and revisit the work. And what I've equaled it to is like going into a new marriage. It sometimes seems theaters always want to put your, create the new work and they forget mm -hmm. about the other body of work. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really nice to be in a setting where I could use resources and time to make the, my body of work that I've done before that I still have questions about to work on it to make it better. It wasn't like it was old. I really wanted to go back and do yeah. that. So I feel like all my work has come to the table and it's not just about one play and if that play fails or succeeds, it's about you know the, the, the work on that whole. And it yeah. makes me think in a long range plan instead of just play the moment to moment kind of like, oh, this play failed so I could learn this here, but now let me go back and fix that play so it's even better. Uh, it's been very um, humbling, but also very um, strengthening at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. so this convening that we're at now is called From Scarcity to Abundance. Mm -hmm. How do you see, this, this word abundance has been thrown out mm -hmm. a lot. Well, how do you do you see abundance? Are we in a moment of abundance? And if so, how do you how do you how do you view that? I feel like uh, we are in a moment of ab abundance. Um, just this convening itself, mm -hmm. just the fact that this TV is going on, just the fact that we're doing uh, connecting all the new plays, just the fact that we feel that all of us as a profession need to have a voice and talk about it and talk about it in a positive not let's just talk about the past, but how mm -hmm. are we going to proactively make changes, I think is very exciting. I think the fact that Arena Stage has put five playwrights on payroll mm -hmm. um, is hopefully not just the only theater that's going to do that. I think we're starting a trend of kicking that idea of the starving artist yeah. to the curb and saying, you know, it's okay for everyone to be fed. Um, it will feed the theater. If mm -hmm. we are, you know, if we're trying to, you know, if the theater's trying to live off starving artists, it will eventually die. And so I think it's a really smart investment to start going back to where the art is. And I hope the same is happening for directors, etc. It's scary, yeah. especially in this economy. But I think in the long range, it's really going to provide bounty. And what I know what it's doing for all of us who are here is we're starting to think big. It's like, oh, we can do this. We can try something new. It's the idea of, of breathing. And I'm feeling it reverb with all the theaters I'm working with. My, yeah. my work with Arena, or the resources that I'm giving at Arena, has helped every single theater that I've been working with. Um, because 
uh, it gives strength to all of us. That was a good move. That's awesome. Okay, I have one more question okay. for you. Okay, so we started the convening with big thoughts with some massive thinkers. Okay. And, and the question was, what do you see the future of theater as? So uh, you can ask that question any way you would like. Um, but what do you see, or what are some of the things that you hope will change um, in, say, the next 10 years? What, what does that look like to you? For me, honestly, I hope that the public school systems mm -hmm. all incorporate drama and playwriting. Um, and they realize that arts are not the cherry on top, but they're part of the flower that keeps uh -huh. the, the cake together. And the sense that um, in, an inspired child is a child who learns. Yeah. I really think that if we start, you know, if we're talking about the life of the theater, if we get kids excited to find their voice, to see, you know, both classic productions and productions that are relevant to what's going on in their neighborhoods, We'll be, you know, really fostering a strong new audience. But I really, I mean, my thought is beyond the theater, etc. And it goes back to my advocacy work with, with yeah, children in children's plays. Um, I think, I mean, we've gotten the DC public schools to incorporate in playwriting in all eleventh grades. In DC. <laughs> That's and I think that would be really great for that to be a yeah. national model because. Um, especially now with the talk about closing the NEA, et cetera, we really need to make people understand that the dialogue around the arts, mm -hmm. that it's not just for theater people. And that's why I'm really excited about the idea of it being a TV and us being connected outside of it, is that the, the third grader out in Iowa going to school is part of our community as well. Yes. His mother is part of our community. You know, their you know, next door neighbor who came from you know, Missouri, you know, that's yeah. all part of the theatrical community. And I think we need to make our community, what's great about this meeting is seeing how much, how exciting and how much partnership we can do. Mm -hmm. I think now we've got to get the other people on board who haven't even thought of theater as a part of their lives. That's my are, big thought. That's <laughs> a great thought. That's a brilliant thought. Thank you so much, Karen. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Join us for uh, next up with uh, playwright Katori Hall, and then we'll be speaking with uh, co-director of the Institute, Jamie Galoon, to talk about the behind the scenes. So Karen and, and, and uh, David have given you some great thoughts on what this thing is, the spirit of it all. Now we're going to find out like how did it actually come together. Uh, so we'll see you in a moment. Thank you. You're good on TV. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you.